Hey Anthony, how you going? This is... Jap I went to Mecca, the makeup store. Um, because I told one of my friends I don't like looking oily under ring lights. And they recommended me rather than like, I think a diffusing powder or something to use this blotting paper. So, I'm making myself look a little less shiny than usual after a whole day in the office. Hope you are having a good week. Hello, Emily. We have some things to discuss. I'm actually worried with this setup. I mean, I love the setup now because it looks like a news sort of setting, you know, with people wandering around in the back, but I'm actually a bit worried that one person, like a drunk or something, will, or someone highly inappropriate will walk by and I won't be able to do anything about it because it's live, but. Anthony, hey Adrian, love how you have the scrolling text at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you pick up on the details, your details, man, I like that. Emily, it looks like a KFC white, not gonna lie, keen for this fit. Well, it's gross, Emily, I mean, look. I mean, like, nobody wants to see that, right? But hey, better on the white than on my face. <sighs> that sign, by the way, Super important at the moment. Always super important, but never has it been more important than it has been the last couple of weeks. Uh, okay, so if you have any comments or anything, let me know. As usual, I'm going to finish making myself look vaguely presentable. I, the topic of today, tonight's conversation is going to be authenticity. So rather than just turning on the camera and thinking that everything works fine for me, I'm showing you everything that can possibly go wrong, including looking far too shiny. And look, there's freckles, there's gray hairs, there's everything. My hair's all over the place. It's like, fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to get into today, I put up a couple of posts today, Instagram posts. Some of you had feedback on them about not being so positive, some people more direct than others. Uh, and I want to go over this in the context of what my experience of pageantry has been in the last couple of months. And no, I'll preface this by saying that it's not been pleasant at all. Um, and it's not just a case of me being butthurt. There are objective things that I know have happened that I strongly disagree with. And I think we need to address them in the Australian pageantry industry. And I guess long rant short, the way we're doing things, the way I'm doing things obviously isn't working if I'm not being part of the solution. And if the problems I've seen, which are some of the queens that I most respect in the industry, who've been there for years, if they're saying, no, nope, I've had enough, not because they didn't win, but because of the practices that went on behind the scenes, then something really needs to change. And I think if you're unaware of that, either you are very new to the scene and you just don't know, you're naive, in which case you just haven't been looking, or you've been sort of doing this, or you're in a position of power that's benefiting from some of the issues that we have at the moment, and you are holding on for dear life. I was in the bathroom before, and I, I kind of struggle to think of any other situation. Um, but let me, in case you didn't see my post today, and look, I put up one post. Let me see if I can find it for you. So I'm going to go to my Facebook page because I did put up one post there that I didn't put on Instagram and feel free to chime in. You guys know I value intelligent discourse. So if you disagree with me, that's great. Certainly won't be the first time today. Um, but for example, where is it? Facebook pages load so slowly. Loading. I've got the little gray circle of death. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so I put up well, okay, let, let's start with this one. Okay, I put up the post about which system do I recommend? And I wrote, this was an Instagram post as well, one where the director holds him or herself to a higher standard than is expected of the delegates. Now, I don't think, is that getting too real? I leave that up to you. Maybe the copy of it was too real. So I wrote, should a director get her delegates to pay for things for her and they never pay them back? Should a director use one of her contestants as a bargaining chip? Should a director allow a girl to enter her system when she's never going to give her a fair chance at winning simply because she's represented other systems in the past? Now, I will warn you now, there's going to be some language here that's pretty adult. 
That's not because I'm using it. That's because that's what was written by someone else. Okay, so if you have young ones or teenagers that you don't want to hear these words, then tune out now. And you can watch it back on the replay and work out which bits are appropriate, if any, for them to watch. Should a director tell his contestants that they are there to be seen, not heard? Now, adult language coming. Should a director refer to one of his queens as a slutty contestant and a whore publicly in social media under any circumstances? Now, I went on to say a few things after that about, yes, I want to spread positivity, but it's more important to me that you become super resilient. And now, those are not hypothetical situations, okay? Let's be clear. I didn't just make those up and say, gee, if this happened, wouldn't it be bad? Those are things I know have happened. Fact. Now, I think there are things wrong with the pageantry system. Most of that is to do with problems here. Some of that is to do with pageants overseas, but most of it is in Australia. I do not like being negative. However, I also don't think simply being positive and thinking that stuff like that doesn't happen. I do not think that is a solution. Now, should I have put that there? Should I maybe even worded it more strongly? Someone asked me who I was talking about and I deflected that question because I don't think it's appropriate to put that in public. But I put that there because my experience with pageantry over the last couple of months has been point blank awful. And I think something needs to change. And I think starting to air some of these issues is really super important. I get that maybe you don't like that language, but again, I didn't use it. And if you want to come at me, I can show you screenshots of the international director that wrote that. I found it offensive. That's why I think it's a problem. Again, those were not hypothetical situations. And these problems are not going to go away by themselves. So if you are following my page, you're following my Instagram, and you're noticing there's a little change in tone or a big change, it's kind of because, yes, I'm the same person, but I figured what I'm doing simply wasn't enough because it hasn't made any difference to these problems. And I'm trying something different. Whether it works or not, I don't know. If you don't like it, feel free to unfollow me. I'm not the sort of person who's going to tell, tell you that you should follow me, you should follow me, I'm the best. But I will tell you that I'm sick of trying to please everyone and sick of trying not to offend anyone because I will tell you point blank, it doesn't work. So that was the Facebook post I put up, well, the Instagram post I put up today. And I think some, some people looked at that and thought that was very negative. Those are facts. I'm sorry if you find the facts negative, but that's what happened. That's the scale of the problem we are facing. And that is not hearsay. That is not rumor. I've witnessed some of those myself and I've heard the other things from very trusted sources. So we have an issue to deal with, don't we? This is why simply me just being naively pos positive all the time and pretending it doesn't happen, I really don't think it's going to work. Tell me differently if you believe differently. Uh, then I went on. What did I go on today? So I posted that early this morning. Then I also posted a post with a link to one of my favorite all-time TV shows, Scrubs, where this character, Dr. Cox, goes on a rant because he's trying to teach these interns. Um, that's not what they call them, is it? You know, baby doctors. And they're screwing up, and then he has a rant at them. And he finishes it by saying, we actually says, I'll toss you to the curb in about 10 seconds and I'll forget you forever in the next five. I... Like, I loved that character in Scrubs, and I do love Tough Love. Now, again, that is also in a comedy. Now, whether you find that positive or negative, did you actually bother to check the clip? You can make that choice for yourself. I'm not going to get offended if you say you find that negative. So be it. I look at that as a wake-up call to say, you need to start doing something and... In my mind, when I said, I will forget you forever in the next five, I'm thinking, if you come at me and you just give me hate, 
because I'm highlighting some of the things that objectively you are doing wrong. For example, you are bullying people, you are rigging systems, things of that nature, not, not, not subjective criticisms, objective criticisms. I am not going to hesitate to do something about it and then forget that you ever existed because I am sick and tired of having to, and a lot of you will resonate with this. I'm sick and tired of having to carry everyone else's emotional baggage around. And I know I'm not the only one because I've been getting so many messages. I, I can't tell you how many messages I've been getting privately on Instagram and Facebook saying, thank you so much for talking about the issues that we can't talk about. I'm worried that they feel they have to message me privately, that they can't say it in publicly, but we're going to tackle one step at a time. But the, the other thing with that is I, I'll show you something over here. I forgot to do this. If you can see that, you'll be able to see that that there says zero focus on me and it says focus on serving. It also, by the way, says the nice guy is dead. Zero focus on me, focus on serving. Now, who cares, right? Why that really resonated with me when I watched that is because I realized that I could just sit here, keep interviewing people, pretending everything was hunky-dory, ignoring all the stuff that I had heard, and everyone would keep kind of liking me. I'd be like vanilla. No one hates vanilla. No, I don't think anyone dies for vanilla. I'm sure there are exceptions, but you get my point. If you just kind of vape, vanilla or beige, you're kind of in the middle. No one likes you. No one hates you. It's easy and comfortable. That would be a, so much easier for me. But then I looked at that focus on serving, right? Serving the community. And to me, it was not serving the community to simply keep my trap shut about the things that I saw happening. I cannot tell you how many, if you thought I was straight shooting this week, I cannot tell you how many times I've bitten my lip and half thought of posting something and then not posted it because I just thought, oh, that's a little too direct. So if you thought I was being offensive or negative before, you, you might want to buckle up. But I was actually told by one of my friends, you shouldn't do this. Like what I'm doing, voicing these concerns because people are going to come at you. It's going to be a huge hassle and basically you don't need it. And I agreed with her and I said, yeah, but that's what this platform exists for. It's the only platform that I know of, correct me if I'm wrong, that is genuinely neutral in the pageant space in maybe the world. I've had people messaging me from America, from the UK. I've got people messaging from me, me from India, right? Because I'm not... I don't have a stake in this. There's no agenda for me here other than the, I've told, told, said this before, the well-being of contestants and having intelligent discourse and debate. If we can have that or hunky dory, I can disappear tomorrow. But I don't know of any other platform that's doing that. So it would have been so much easier for me to just continue on alone. But I didn't think that was what was in the best interests of the pageant community. So. I've had, as I said, a lot of people messaging positive things. I've had some people saying that it's negative and that I'm a bad example. Um, and, you know, if you want to, you can go on my, on my latest post. Let's go back to the post for a sec. It's been a long week. I'm getting a little bit lost. Um, okay, so here's the one that I think caused the most concern, which was I put up nothing worse than an expensive headpiece on a cheap queen. Now, I kind of thought that was a little bit tongue in cheek. I do know that some people have no sense of humor. That has been proven to me lately over the last week as well. Um, and by cheap, I'm going to state like that's I'm not talking about sexually cheap. I'm just talking about not living according to your own beliefs, morals and values, basically not having class. And now. Is that negative? I mean, a lot of people liked it. I'm looking at it now going, this post is performing better than 95% of other posts on your page. Um, now that, that one, I had two people message me about. So if you look at it on Facebook, you can see, OMG, I'm sorry, but what's with all the hate and negative posts, which I took a little bit of like, what are you talking about? Because like on Instagram, I have almost 600 posts. If only the last two or three are negative. I'm questioning like, what do you mean by what's with all the hate and negative posts? 
And then I asked for clarification about what, uh, what post are you referring to? And I got nothing. Um, but then I will also say, and this was a quote that she posted underneath, and I don't necessarily disagree with it, but you listen to this. The tongue like a sharp knife kills without drawing blood. That is true. Teach this triple truth to all. A generous heart, kind speech, and a life of service and compassion are the things which renew humanity. I completely agree. Now let me tell you some of the things that I've seen. I have worked with people who have been beaten to a pulp within an inch of their life by their partner. I've worked with people who've been raped. I've worked with people who've tried to kill themselves on multiple occasions. I have interviewed a woman who was shot at at her head by her partner. He just happened to miss. And what I commented back was, yes, I, I totally agree. But what when those things aren't enough? Now, so it's a bit less hypothetical. Let's say you're out somewhere at night. Let's say you have a daughter or a friend. Your daughter or a friend goes to a club. And again, I'm going to deal with some adult issues here. So if you don't want to hear it, tune out. Don't be one of those people who tunes in when I told you to tune out, then get offended because I'm just going to delete the comment because it's stupid. Okay. But if you're going to travel with me down this road, then we'll have an adult conversation. And I would really, really love that. But to go back to my example, let's say your partner, right? Or you were the one who was beaten to a pulp by the partner that was supposed to love you above all. And again, I've worked with these women. I've interviewed them in my book. This is not hypothetical. Would the generous heart, kind speech, and a life of service and compassion, is that really what you're going to preach to that person? I kind of think those are really positive thoughts, but in some cases, as I said, I don't believe it to be enough. Now, are we at that, are we at that position with pageantry in Australia? I don't know, but I will tell you the system as it is, is causing a lot of queens, forget what I think, a lot of queens to drop out because they are completely disenfranchised, they were bullied. I had one person very recently tell me it was the worst week of her life. She had never seen such an obvious case of rigging. And this was in a major, major pageant that everyone knows about. So I kind of because I've played it so nice in the past, I believe that what I really need to do is go a little bit on the offensive and then maybe I will find my balance. So maybe that is a little bit offensive, right? But as a guy who's played nice for so long, as I wrote on my board, I showed you the nice guy is dead. I feel I need to push. And the reason I'm willing to do that is because I'm advocating not for myself, but for you guys, hopefully, right? I mean, forget about, my, I have no agenda here right? But let's say your girl, right? Your, or you go, your daughter or you go overseas to an international pageant and the international director says, you're here to be seen, not heard. Well, that's not very positive, is it? But it happened. Now take another example, and these aren't hypothetical. I'm going to quote you actual examples. Imagine if you are pushed down the steps because you weren't getting ready fast enough and then you twist your ankle. What happens if you are supposed to get in the top six and then someone buys your spot with tens of thousands of dollars? Or what happens if the international director suddenly doesn't really like what you've been doing, even though you've done nothing but speak your truth, you haven't named him, shamed him or anything like that. And then he posts on social media that you are a slutty contestant and a whore. You tell me what positive thinking is going to do in those circumstances. And this is why I'm such a huge advocate of intelligent discourse, because yes, maybe that stuff is completely inappropriate for a teen to see. And I apologize. On the other hand, I coached tennis for almost 20 years and the teens loved me. Why? because I treated them like real humans. I didn't just swear at them or anything like that, but I treated them like young adults who could be trusted to make their own decisions. And I'm sorry, but if like I gave up blaming anyone else for my problems when I was like five years old, 
okay? I remember I won, maybe a bit older than that, but I got scholarships. I got, at the end of year six, I got three scholarships into high, different high schools. I worked out the monetary value, this is how screwed up I was, of those scholarships and decided that's how much my parents owed me. And I wrote it in my, in my calendar. Now that is seriously screwed up, right? But that is the last time I really thought that anyone else was responsible for my problems. I think if you're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and you're going to read something on social media, get upset about it, and then you're going to keep following it and then keep saying how upset, like, as my friend said today, if it offends you, unfollow. And I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm trying to have, I am having with you a very real conversation which someone just messaged me 10 minutes ago and saying, loving the real and raw. And I said back, not everyone's appreciating. And she said, well, sometimes the truth hurts. But again, I'm okay with you finding my stuff offensive. I don't think it's really offensive or negative or full of hate. I would ask you, can we have a debate about it? If not, you want to disengage, please unfollow. What I do not understand and will not tolerate is someone who says that they have all these disagreements with what I stand for, and then they follow me anyway. Like I can see you liking comments. I can see your names pop up in the stories. What are you doing? Don't you have anything better to do? I'm gonna go to the comments for a sec. Are there things actually said to some, I'm not being sarcastic, I'm actually. Yes, uh, Krishna, these things were said and I can provide screenshots of the person who did it. That's how bad it is. I just, I'm not making this up. And maybe that's why this person thought I was being negative. These aren't hypothetical situations. I wish I could make up stuff like that. A year ago when I started in pageantry, I wouldn't have thought that this was possible. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Those comments about slutty and being a whore. The worst part was one of my, at that time, one of my friends went over to compete in his system and was trying to defend him to my face. That's why I asked in my post, can you think of any situation, any situation in which putting that in social media in public is appropriate? She argued it's not public, it's on his profile. Yeah, but his profile is public. Anyone can follow it, everyone can see it. And he is a director. Is he not supposed to hold himself to a higher standard than his delegates? I'll leave that to you to discuss. It takes a true leader, Anthony says, to step out and say what needs to be said. Thank you. I don't think of myself as that, but I feel like this needs to be done. I won't say it's been pleasant, but I do love some of the messages I've received. I really appreciate them, especially when there are other people coming at me, usually sideways and very passively aggressively and not understanding the full context of what I'm doing. Um, but I think it needs to be done. That's why I said zero focus on me, focus on serving. That's what I'm doing, even though it's not particularly pleasant. And Chantel has said, totally agree with Anthony. Yeah, so someone, another friend of mine messaged me today saying that she found me an inspiration because I was so successful. And I'm, I'm just not that person. I know it probably says a lot about me and having issues accepting compliments. Maybe when I get this whole pageantry situation sorted out, I, I will view myself as a success, but no promises. Um, but that was, okay, so that was a post that I put up today. And I'm still waiting for a response on all the other posts that apparently were hateful or negative. Um, as I said, there are almost 600 posts on my Instagram. If three of them are negative and 597 of them are positive, I think you can do the math on that. And by the way, don't believe anyone who's positive all the time. What I'm being with you now is real. Is it scary? Yes, because someone's going to watch this who's not commenting now and is going to share it and then gossip about it, or someone's going to put a comment underneath afterwards, or someone else is going to actually have the courage to say they disagree with me, and then that passive-aggressive person is going to like that comment because that's what's happening. So, now, that was a message that I got on my Facebook underneath that post. Now, another friend of mine messaged me on Instagram, and I want to give you an understanding as to the sort of person I am and the sort of discourse that I'm looking for. So now, full disclosure, I've interviewed this person, so I do know her. Of course, I'm not going to name her. And th the only reason I'm commenting, by the way, in public about the, the other post, what the person commented underneath is because that's already in public. So my, my decision on that was, well, if you post it in public, I have the right to respond in public. But if you message me in private, I'm never going to disclose that because 
that's not who I am. Okay, so she commented with an emoji, the shocked emoji, with the same post, so nothing worse than an expensive headpiece on a cheap queen. And she wrote, that's not a very nice post. Now, understanding the sort of person that I have been, that already to me is like, oh my God, what have I done? I've offended someone and I'm really sorry. But I'm trying to evolve, not be different, but grow a spine for God's sakes. I mean, couldn't we all stand to do a little bit of that, be a bit more resilient? And I wrote back, wasn't really supposed to be. And I was going to leave it there. But I know this person and I value her intelligence and her friendships. So I wrote, I do understand where you're coming from. Given the problems I've seen in the last two months, and I've verbalized some of them to you, I'm not convinced being nice will work. Doesn't mean I need to be nasty. And I don't think anyone can accuse me of being vindictive or nasty in any of the things I've done. If you want to come at me, we'll have a discussion. But I will be more straight shooting. We can agree to disagree if you want, that's fine. Then I gave her the high five emoji. She responded, I just love your vibe of spreading positivity and supporting that we're all striving to make a positive difference, even if we have different backgrounds and values. The post just didn't seem to fit with your usual messaging. I really hope everything is okay and nobody out there is clouding your positivity. I wish you all the best and I'm here if you ever need to talk with two X's. I've got nothing to disagree with that, right? Um, yes, that, that's all, all she said is what I'm about as well. Then I wrote back, I value your opinion. To be honest, this week has been tough, yes, but I am not sure that my usual messaging will be enough, if that makes sense. So I am trying something slightly different, which is what I said before. The messaging will remain largely the same, and yes, it will. I'm just going to be a little bit more direct and straight shooting in certain circumstances because there are problems that need to be solved and the way I was wasn't solving them before. But who knows? I may look back at this post in 24 hours, decide it was ill-conceived and delete it. I really don't know. But yes, this week has been incredibly frustrating and I've bitten my lip more times than I can count. In other words, saying not saying things that I was tempted to say. And specifically, it's here's the real crux of what I said. And specifically, it's not the different beliefs and values that have me frustrated. It's the people actively looking to silence those with different beliefs and values that has got me going. That's what I really dislike is anyone who's just going to silence debate. Because as I wrote in another post, if you silence debate, that's a dictatorship. If you have a group of people who all think and believe and do the same thing, that's a cult. There's no way around it, right? That's what it is. Let's call it what it is. Um, Rachel has said, unless someone actually confronts these issues and nothing will change and before you know it, no one will want to take part. Numbers in Australia are going down. If it was all going great, wouldn't they be going up? Replying to Rachel, Chantel said, absolutely. Olivia has said, just being nice and ignoring wrongdoing just allows people to continue that behavior. Stay strong. Thank you, Olivia. I really appreciate that. Um, Anthony, if it's always positive, it lacks authenticity. Thank you for being so real with us. So, yeah, well, you're getting the real deal now because when I, I feel I have to practice what I preach. So in terms of being authentic, I started this live before I was ready. Um, another story, I was asked by my friend Jasmine to judge a bikini comp and I initially said no because I didn't believe it aligned with my values. But now having said that, if I had believed that, I wouldn't have been in pageantry in the first place because I didn't think very highly of pageantry. But I tell people you shouldn't judge something if you haven't been in it or tried it before. So I messaged her today and said, um, actually, I would be a hypocrite if I didn't at least give it a go. So I am going in all likelihood to judge a bikini comp and then I will feel that my opinion has some merit. So this is what I'm saying. I want to practice what I preach. I would hate to be a hypocrite. So yes, I'm being super real with you. Now, to come back to this, so I said the issue I had was with people silencing those with different beliefs and values. Not people having different beliefs and values, but people looking to silence it. And then she wrote back, I can understand with heart. Everyone has moments of having enough, and it becomes increasingly difficult to keep advocating for what's right positively when we feel it's often overlooked and controversial ways tend to incite more conversation. That's true, by the way. I did know writing things like that would catch people's attention. But again, I'm doing that even though it's not comfortable for me because these issues need attention. And if I verbalize it in a nice way, no one's going to read it or a lot fewer people are going to read it. And I will happily take that bullet. Some people calling me out and hating me if it moves the conversation forwards. 
I know you're passionate about your messaging and I just wanted to hopefully bring you some light if the world is getting you down. Onwards and upwards, Adrian. And then she smiley face in the next and I said, thanks. Really appreciate you and that you voiced your opinion to me. So when I tell you that I value intelligent discourse, that's what I mean. Okay, so she, I wouldn't say she came at me, but she voiced that she wasn't particularly in agreement, let's say, with what I did. I had a discussion with her and I prefaced it by saying, I'm okay if we disagree, that's fine. Then I let her know what was actually going on in the context. And at the end of it, even if we maybe disagree that this post is appropriate or not, she can understand where I'm coming from. Wouldn't the world be so much of a better place if we could just all do that, right? Let's just do that, <laughs> do that. Um, Olivia, uh, Olivia said, I find that girls don't speak up out of fear of ruining their own chance in the future. Exactly, right? That's why I felt about two weeks ago, I suddenly realized what the pageant project needed to be. It needed to be a voice for you guys to say the things that weren't getting said. And no surprise, it didn't surprise me, saying those things suddenly got me a lot of attention and none of it was neutral. It was all, oh, this is great. And then a lot of it was a passive aggressive, yeah, because I'm suddenly a threat to them somehow. I don't want your systems. I'm, I'm not coming for, for any of that. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it myself. I, I'm not trying to depose anyone. I just want, I want transparency. I want authenticity. I want people living by their beliefs. I want the contestants to feel valued. I don't want them pushed downstairs. I don't want them described as whores or sluts. I don't want their places being bought out by other people. Is that too much to ask? And if you're threatened by me wanting those, I think there's an issue. And Teller said, there have been many of us questioning our journeys and whether or not to continue because of these reasons. I personally think that we are lucky to have you speaking on these issues and sparking conversation within the community. Without the discussion, we will never move forward and grow. Well, again, Chantel, I, I appreciate that more than you know. Um, and yeah, as I said, I, I probably wouldn't do this if it was just for myself because I don't need the stress. God forbid, like I'm not getting it. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not being paid a cent for any of this. Um, that, that'll give you some context. I've been doing like, if I've released, we're, we'll be on 40 interviews and we're on to 39. If I tell you, and this is no exaggeration, that each interview took about six hours to re shoot, record, edit, you do the math, how many hours that is unpaid. Then you think there are 500 and something posts, or almost 600 posts on Instagram. You do the math on how much that has, you know, how much work I've put into this. So for anyone to come at me and just sort of dismiss me as being negative and not understand my context, I really think it's just more about them than... Anyway, moving on. Okay, so should we go back to our posts? Now, I am the sort of person when I get criticism even if it's kind of undeserved, I'll look at it and go, okay, is there a, a, an element of truth here? So I had a post scheduled to release at 8 p.m. and I went back and looked at it and I will show you exactly what I mean. And you can tell me what you think. Okay, this was on Canva and I'll show you it now. Oops, I will try to, because I'm a tech genius. Okay, so this is the original one. Oh, you have a problem with me calling you out? Maybe you should have done the right thing in the first place. Now, ooh, is that spicy or what? I was really feeling that. And then I thought back on it and I thought, okay, me being negative is also not going to for the conversation and I don't wanna be that person. So can I get the point across, but maybe phrase it in a more positive way? So I changed it from this to this with a bit of pink, always do the right thing. Then you don't have to worry about being called out. Now, I think that kind of makes the same point. Is it still straight shooting? Yes. But I want to say like, again, practicing what I preach. If I think I've done something wrong, I'll own it. So, I mean, you tell me, is that post better, worse? Should I go with the original? Should I stick with that? Is it still too on the nose? I don't know. But here's the thing, I never th just assume that I'm right. And when someone comes at me, I don't just shut them up. There are a lot of people in the industry who don't behave like that. They are sure they're right. They probably think they're on the level of gods that they can do nothing wrong. And God forbid you come at them, even with a little bit of constructive feedback, they will shut you up because they don't want any of it. 
I do not want to be that person. I do not assume that I'm correct. So I change that post. So I change it on my on my scheduling software. That's a post that's going to go up. Now, the the copy that's going to go underneath will still be the same. And I can show you it because it's here. I've got nothing to hide. So with that post about always do the right thing, then you don't have to worry about being called out. And I've written, yes, I'm big on positivity, but sometimes you've just got to call people out, not for yourself, but for integrity and because it's the right thing to do. Vocal minorities yelling other people down is not acceptable. And the number of private messages and DMs I've been getting lately is hugely satisfying to me in that I've earned your trust, but also really sad that opinions can't be shared publicly for fear of being yelled down. Sort of similar to what I think Olivia said about queens can't say it because they're afraid they're going to get a lot of blowback, basically. I will never do this in a classless or tactless way, but if you are hurting the welfare and well-being of pageant competitors by putting your ego first, I am ready to go to war with you. Strong words. I don't know, isn't that kind of what we need? I mean, if, if there are problems, we need someone to take a stand. Can't take a stand with one foot, you know, one foot on either side of the door. So I changed the post to be a little bit more uplifting. So it's not just, oh my God, the pageant, you know, not that I thought it was voiced that way, but I thought, okay, the last one was a bit on the nose. Let's make it a bit softer, but still make our point. So I'm willing to take feedback, give it to me. Like I want to represent your interests best, but to bring this all full circle, girls like the ones I know, queens would not be dropping out and telling me things like that was the worst week of my life. I have never seen a pageant so obviously rigged. That would not be helping. That is that would not be happening in a healthy system. So if any of you are going to tell me, if anyone tells me, oh, pageantry is great in Australia, you shouldn't be so negative. You should just focus on the positives. Again, I'm going to tell you what happened if you were the one that was called a slut or a whore in public on an international director's social media. If you can answer me that question, I'll delete all these posts. That's simple. Are you going to go to the woman who was shot at by her partner and say, think positive, you know, look on the bright side. Oh, you're talking about this stuff. You're being negative. Don't bring it up. Like what, what's wrong with you? I value authenticity. I believe people are adult enough to make informed decisions. I think some of them haven't exercised that muscle for so long that they've forgotten how to use it. But that is because I know that. And here's the thing. I was screaming for just someone to interview like a director. I know quite a few directors, but I wanted a director who obviously just by sheer weight of comments underneath was obviously respected and loved. Not that she didn't have haters or he didn't have haters, but just by the sheer weight of how many people have said that she's great or he's great, I could go, okay, this is a system, at least a director, not the system's very, not the director, is but this is a director I can put my platform behind. So what did I view? do? I interviewed Maria Torres, who's the international director uh, of Galaxy, interviewed her, sounded her out. I cannot tell you how many women jumped on giving her love. I wanted them to ask questions and all I had to scroll through. Love Maria, love Maria, your system is the best. Love, 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 love. And then eventually I got some questions. Now, could that, could they be biased? Yeah, probably. But if they were biased and they wanted to like, like they, they, a lot of them weren't carrying favor because Maria couldn't see the comments. I could, yes, you could have gone back and seen it. But I kind of think, you know, with that overall weight, and then I did give a lot of, you know, I like to think I can read people. Pageant world has tested that. But I just went, you know what? This woman is super real, super real. When she said, for God's sakes, people, it's just a pageant. I was like, this is my director. I, I can gel with this woman. So I messaged her last morning. And I said, you know what? I'm clearing my interview schedule for two weeks. I recorded a video for her Galaxy Girl saying, hey, if you want to interview, just shoot a video for me, for me, tell me what you're about so I can see what you're about. And I've cleared my interview schedule for the next two weeks all for Galaxy Girls because not because of the girls, but because of Maria, that director. So anyone who tells me I'm negative, well, sometimes it's difficult to see the light when you're surrounded by dark. But in that dark, I can tell you that one person just doing the right thing really, really stands out. 
So if you want to throw someone like that at my way, go for it. But I will tell you, one thing that I'm very good at is seeing through BS. So do not send me press releases, please. It drives me crazy when I go to directors' websites, pageants' website and says, our system, unlike every other system in Australia, is about women's empowerment. Uh, mm, I'm sorry, what? Like, please, please, I do not understand. No other system is about women's empowerment. Huh. Okay. Our system is unique because it has no height restrictions, no weight restrictions. Okay. Unique? Uh, not really understanding. And I just want to be super, super authentic. That's what I've been with you tonight. I know it's been a long video, so I certainly appreciate those of you sticking with it. Um, Jessica Barclay has written, you are an amazing voice in pageantry. Every podcast is nailed it. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, Olivia said, I think that you need to decide whether you want to be an objective page or promoting a certain ideal. That is a very good point, and I can't come up with a good answer. Um, I'd like to think that my ideal is pretty close to objectivity. That's why I have zeroed in on my agenda. I call it agenda. Everyone has an agenda. Um, I'm all right with you having an agenda, by the way, as long as you tell people what it is. My agenda is to advocate for the well-being, mental and emotional and physical, of the contestants involved above everything else, above directors' interests, sponsors' interests, anything like that, and to encourage intelligent discourse, debate, because isn't that the only way that we're going to get better? So is that completely objective? I don't know. I mean, I don't think anybody, and I know Liv, you're intel incredibly smart, you know, no one can ever claim to be completely objective. You could say, oh, bring more people in, but then you just have the sum of, the sum of everyone's sort of subjectivity. So, but great point, great point. And I will find out some way Maybe for help, someone to help keep me accountable, kind of thing with the network that I do that's already kind of happened today, as I mentioned with my Instagram, that conversation with that girl. Um, and with people like you, Liv, well, I'm sure I will be held accountable. Maybe sometimes more than I'd like, but I, I'm joking. I think you can see that I take criticism on board and I do try to adapt. And if I ever make a mistake, hey, I will apologize. See this face? I will say sorry. I screwed up. Show me someone who's willing to do that in public. We need a bit more of that. Not, oh my God, I'm so sorry that offended you. I'm so sorry you got offended. No, I'm sorry I wrote an offensive post is what you meant. Um, Jessica Barclay, haters are a sign you have passion about something. X, thank you. Maria Zappi, yeah, the, the haters. <laughs> yeah, well, Jess, look, I knew it was going to happen. I can't say I was thrilled when it started happening and people started coming out of the woodwork and taking shots at me when I put so much into pageantry. Um, but I completely agree with that. If no one hates you, you're not doing anything worth doing. So I actually decided just in the last two weeks, you know what? This is what the pageant project was born for. It was to do this, to be a voice for the voiceless and to call people out when they're saying things that obviously are false, but everyone's too scared to say anything about it. And I'm willing to put myself through that because as I pointed out to you at the beginning on that board it says zero focus on me, focus on serving. And I'm here to serve you guys. So if you disagree with what I'm saying, tell me. If you love what I'm doing, tell me because I'd hate to go and f this is kind of stressful. I don't need this. Okay. I've got a business and like other things that I have to be doing that pay bills. This doesn't pay me anything, anything. Okay. Nothing. I'm not taking a single cent. No. One person paid me $100 to do a photo shoot, which took me about six hours of travel time and probably three hours to edit. So I have taken money. If you think I'm rolling in dosh, <laughs> and if you think my agenda is to make money, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, but yeah, no. So that, that's what I've been up to. And if you are feeling like I'm calling you out a little bit, Sorry, not sorry, because I'd like to think that I've outlined my arguments objectively. And I kind of think they're hard to argue with if I'm saying what I'm advocating for is the health and well-being of contestants, number one, above directors, above sponsors. Um, and then I want intelligent discourse. I want a space where people can feel safe to voice their opinion without being told something insulting. Right. 
It's that simple. So, for those of you who watched all the way, thank you. I hope that you are people who are genuinely watching and you're not just watching to spy, to share it to someone else. If you want to do that, hey, I can't stop you. It's a free world. Have at it. But um, I'm ready to go to war over this because I think it's some, I believe in the pageantry system. I believe that the people, some of the people in the pageantry system, because they've become my closest friends and I don't want to see the pageantry system die out. So I am ready to go to war over that. It's got nothing to do with me. It's, it's not to do with me. If it was to do with me, I wouldn't be doing this. It's too stressful. So that's me. Peace out. Let me know in the comments what you think. And again, I'm totally understanding if you're watching this and you go, I don't want to comment on this because then people will think, well, people will come for me. Message me privately. That's all cool too. Um, thank you for everyone sending the hearts. God, I've been live for 46 minutes. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a magnificent Friday night. Thank you so much for watching. If you li like this, then share it on with someone. I'm not going to get offended if you don't because I know it's pretty controversial at the moment. But stay strong, stay you, and um, I'll speak to you very soon.